on the face. So these four things will conclude that the patient is having anaphylaxis. It's not like only one thing, suppose there is a skin rash and you're gonna be taking it into account that it is anaphylaxis. No, it's not anaphylaxis. So all four systems are supposed to be in place when you are concluding that it is anaphylaxis. Okay, guys. So uh, now let's talk about that. Okay, uh, there are a couple of confusions. I really want to just help you out to uh, get rid of those uh, confusions that when you come across a cement, suppose you are making an appearance and you saw the cement or you are in the, in the room where the cement is in front of you, the first thing you need to do is that just forget about the, anybody is there, any examiner is there. You need to talk to the patient. You need to talk to the simmen as if you are dealing with the patient. You don't, you just have to verbal, whatever you are verbalizing, whatever you are talking, I'll explain the moment we'll go through the simmen. But you have to, you have to talk to the simmen. That's it. no need to involve examiner in any part. So, when you now you are supposed you just get and you saw the simon and you want to be introducing yourself and you want to talk to the patient you will introduce yourself and uh, you will ask him what happened so he will be like i am having some problem doctor suppose uh if if anybody cannot listen or something is wrong please let me know you can unmute yourself and you can tell me uh, so you will talk to the simman and you're going to be asking like what happened and he'll be like anaphylaxis can come up with so many uh, clues. He might have dizziness, he might have shortness of breath, he might have like uh, problem breathing. So at first if he's saying doctor I am having a problem, I cannot breathe. So the first thing you need to do is that you need to assure the patient that I'm here to take care of you. I'll be taking care of you. And uh, let me examine you. And I'll be doing an A to E assessment to find out what exactly is happening to you, okay? And suppose specifically in terms of anaphylaxis, there could be uh, like if, if, if there's a blood attached to the patient's semen, or there could be a drug history behind that. So first you need to do, because it's a matter of seconds and minutes. So you're going to be asking the patient that, can you open your mouth for me, please? And things you need to check, like uh, any swelling of the tongue, any swelling of the uvula, and specifically, if you are totally oblivion of the fact that what is happening to the patient, you can see any other factors along the way, along the route, like any tooth missing in his mouth, any dentures, and you have to look for the face, any swelling on the face, or swelling of the lips, angioedema, that is one of the salient features of anaphylaxis. So you have to look all these things. And uh, you have to ask the patient to stick out his tongue. You have to check for the secretions as well, because it's not only that you are going to treat the patient, but it's important to keep the patient stable. What if you won't open the patient's mouth and after a minute or so, the patient will collapse because of some secretions that are, that, that are choking him. So you have to be, you have to go with a generalized approach, the way you will take care of any patient anywhere. So you're going to be uh, checking the lips and the, uh, specifically the, all the salient features related to angioedema. And if you, if you notice, suppose that there is a swelling in the lips, uh, there is a swelling in the tongue, then you have a better idea that, okay, okay, it could be anaphylaxis, okay? And if, if the blood is attached, that is a very, uh, very prominent thing and you have to stop the blood and you have to announce that my patient is having anaphylaxis. And, uh, definitely then injections come into place. But if there is no, uh, uh, like you cannot appreciate the swelling, 
of the tongue or you cannot appreciate any uh, angioedema then you have to go to the second part of the of the uh, your assessment that is breathing so uh, at that at that part of time uh, you have to ask for the vitals of the patient specifically blood pressure respiratory rate and uh, pulse rate and saturation so at that time when uh, the saturation has been shown to you that it's dropping then the first thing you need to do is to talk to the patient just forget about the examiner and you need to say that uh, whatever the name like suppose mr john is there so mr john i can see that you are the oxygen in your blood is getting down so i'll be giving you high flow oxygen before that you need to ask about like any uh, copd like any smoking cough smoker's cough so you know the protocol if there is a smoker's cough what you need to do we'll be talking in detail about that later on so you going to be saying Anybody, eh? don't eat anybody. You hear me? Stop eating. Hello, Kill the day. I want the phone. You want the what? The uh, please, could you mute the yourself? <clears throat> so, anybody can uh, unmute themselves and can let me know that uh, they are listening. Yes, doctor. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are listening. Yeah, because there was there was kind yes, of like are. interruption. Interruption. Thank you so much. So, uh, we 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 were talking about the airway part. So we did talk about the part where we might appreciate the swelling of tongue. We might appreciate the facial edema, and we might not. It can be the case. So at first, if there is a blood attached to that. because as i told you before the anaphylaxis reaction comes with a package so we have to go down the road to find out that the patient is really having anaphylaxis so at that time when we saw that there is a swelling of the tongue and lips and we get to know that it is anaphylaxis for the first thing we did is that we gave the patient oxygen high flow oxygen 15 liters of oxygen through non breather mask and at that time you need to talk to the patient and you need to tell him that mr john your oxygen is getting low so i'll be giving you 15 liters of oxygen through non breather mask okay and then you have to put the mask with the oxygen after that you need to go down you need to go down and you need to expose the patient and that comes the breathing part where you going to be asking the patient that mr john i'm going to expose you please be with me at that time when it comes to inspection there are a couple of things you need to do when it comes to like uh, uh, breathing part there are a couple of things you need to do in terms of ins inspection that is like the, the usage of accessory muscles and uh, tracheal deviation expansion of the chest along with that the most important thing in anaphylaxis is the skin rash on the skin on the chest the moment you get to see the the skin rash on the chest and like you also appreciate that there is a swelling of the tongue along with that you also can appreciate in the monitor that the blood pressure is in the limit like 100 by 80 or something or it is slightly lower and the the uh, pulse rate is high then you can deduce that okay this is anaphylaxis so my patient is having anaphylaxis that can be announced or deduced even at the first stage that's absolutely fine it doesn't matter you are deducing it at first place or in the breathing part or in the circulation 
that is absolutely fine. In one or two minutes, you're going to be going through it and you're going to be deducing it that this is anaphylaxis. So at that time, you saw the skin rash on the chest and you will say that, Mr. John, I'll be giving you an injection as you are having a reaction. So I'll be giving you an injection to make you feel better, okay? And then you will verbalize the strength and the root of the injection you are giving. Like you're gonna be giving I an injection and the strength would be one to 1,000. And you will be giving 0.5 ml, okay? So uh, after that, then it comes like, and then you keep the, the other most important thing is you keep on reassuring the patient, Mr. John. Once you give the oxygen, Mr. John, how are you feeling now? Are you feeling better? No, doctor, I'm not feeling better. Okay, let me assess you more. We are here to help you out. Please don't worry. You have to keep on assuring, and that will increase your IPS. The moment you are in the breathing part, there are like four parts. The first I told you inspection, palpation doesn't play that much significant role here until unless there is a accident trauma case where you have to look for subcutaneous emphysema, okay? That doesn't play that much role. Percussion might help you. So, so how will you do the percussion? Suppose, uh, as I told you before, that you have to forget that is, there is any examiner down there. So you're gonna be saying that, Mr. John, I'm gonna be tapping on your chest, okay? Let me know if it hurts. You're going to be quickly doing the percussion. And after that, you're going to be doing the aspiration. Mr. John, I'll be listening to your uh, um, lung sounds. At that specific time, that would be uh, the bullet point you're going to get that the patient is wheezing at that time. Okay. So you will say, My patient is wheezing. Mr. John, my patient is wheezing. So I'll be giving my patient salbutamol 5 mg through venturi mask. So you're gonna be removing the non-breather mask and you're gonna be attaching the venturi mask along with like uh, salbutamol and you will give the patient at that time. After that, there is, there is a, now you have to address the skin rash along the way. And patient is saying, doctor, I'm having itching on the skin. So at that specific time, you're gonna be saying that, Mr. John, I'll be giving an injection to make you feel better. And then you will say, I'll give my patient color syndrome 100 mg IV, okay? Uh, when it comes, when you, are, uh, when you are done with the breathing part, you'll go to the circulation where you will be checking the rate, pulse rate, Extremities are very important. When you are checking the pulse rate, just try to check the radial pulse on the both hands. And specifically when you are checking the check for the dorsal spiders as well. And when you are like, when you can feel the pulse, you don't need to go for a popliteal and all that. And refill time is like two seconds. If it is prolonged, then it is also one of the signs that my patient is having hypovolemic shock. But these things can also be deduced or being reflected on the monitor you are looking at all the time. So every time you are doing airway, then you are doing breathing, then you are doing circulation. While jumping from breathing to circulation, you need to go back and you need to assure the patient how you are feeling, John, how you are feeling, John. Once you will give color phenomene, his itching will stop and he will start feeling. When you are giving salbutamol, you give adrenaline, and you give color of phenomene, the patient will start feeling better. Now you will be saying, how are you feeling, John? And a kind of better doctor, but not much. Okay, I'll give my patient 200 mg hydrocortisone IV. Okay, so this will definitely facilitate the action of adrenaline. Color phenomene will reverse the action of anaphylaxis. So this is how you will proceed. So in these in these uh, 
uh, when you are going down the road, there are a couple of things before going for a disability and before going for exposure. As I told you in the first part, you have to do six things at a time. Like what? You were assessing the patient. You, you notice the finding that the patient is swelling. Okay. You notice that the patient has a rash. You notice that there is a wheezing sound. Okay. Along that way, what you will do specifically in the B part, keep this thing in your mind. You have to always order ABGs and chest X-ray. ABGs and chest X-ray. That is very important. ABGs will give you uh, lots and lots of things. Calcium, sodium, potassium, pH, lactate, everything ABGs will give you. So in any simon, except from even like even acute limb ischemia, you have to say ABGs and chest X-ray. These are the two investigations you want to be doing when you are doing the breathing part. So you are talking to the patient, you are noticing the findings, you are assessing the patient, and you are doing the respective in, uh, investigations, and you are doing the intervention, and you are looking into the monitor. So six things you are doing at one time. So after circulation, when you, uh, when you are at the part of circulation, here, what are the investigations you need to order? As the patient's BP is dropping, even after being injected with adrenaline, so the BP is dropping down. So you will say sometimes there is an IV cannula attached on both sides of the arm. And if it is not attached, so you will say I'll attach two large IV bowl cannulas on both sides of my patient's arm. Heart. IV fluids, 500 to 1,000 for over 15 minutes. And you will be keep on assessing the patient. And from the other, you will take the sample for six investigations that are very important, like full blood count for infection, any kind of infection. You will be doing urea and electrolytes. You will be doing LFTs. You will be, you have to say that you will be doing coagulation profile, a C reactive protein that is to check for any inflammation. Apart from that, you will be asking about the ECG. That is obviously that is very important. Okay. So after the C bar circulation. Then you will go to uh, disability. I'll be answering all these questions by the end of it. And uh, uh, once you will just get the rhythm of it, uh, 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 you can just uh, keep your questions. And inshallah, by the end of the this session, I'll let you know. And you can ask me the questions. Uh, so... Uh, after circulation, it here comes the disability part. Okay. So circulation, as I told you, that these are the tests you need to mention. Full blood count, UNEs, LFTs, coagulation profile, C-reactive protein. And above, you have already in breathing part, you said ABGs and chest X-ray. No matter what kind of symptom you are encountering. Just keep these things in your mind. There are some specific investigations that are related to specific symptoms which you need to keep in your mind. Like supposed D-dimers, which are very important for pulmonary embolism, A and AFib, and all that. But generalized, you have to ask for these tests. And then it comes to disability part that uh, the word, there is a mnemonic that's called AVPU which is supposed to be done before going into GCS or something, because you don't have to do the GCS if, if the patient's AVPU is fine. Like patient is alert, he's talking to you, he's, he's verbally responding and he is responding to pain and patient is not unconscious. So when you are doing the disability part, the D part, so you will be saying, 
my patient is responding to verbal response and my patient is scoring V on AVPU. The patient is responding to pain. My patient is scoring P on AVPU. And if these are not there, then you will be going into GCS and all that stuff, okay? So here, uh, I, just, I just forgot to mention one important thing. When you are in circulation, please mention temperature and glucose, please. Apart from the five tests I told you, full blood count, though temperature and glucose has always been asked in the E part, exposure part, but don't, don't get late to that extent. Just ask about temperature and blood sugar in the C part, circulation part, apart from the five basic investigations I told you. And then it comes the last part that is exposure where you're going to be taking the consent of the patient that I'm going to be exposing you to have a look for any kind of cause that is causing a problem. So at this part, you will be looking for everything, like any invasive lines, like complete exposure, any cannulas, any like pack tubes, any catheter, um, any broken wound, any bad source, you have to look for all these things. Okay, here you have to do the exposure and you, you'll be there if there is a catheter and you have to check if there is a bag attached to uh, the catheter, you have to look for the color, uh, you have to check for the um, specifically, like if it is like concentrated or is there is something blood or it is de if the patient is dehydrated, then it would be not straw color, it would be dark. So you have to look into all these things. So after the exposure part, now you are almost done. Just make sure, make sure, please make sure that you have to take the history as well. That is very important because history has its own importance. So this will, uh, it, it seems like it, it takes a lot of time, but believe me, if you practice, it will not take much more than three minutes. Not more than three minutes. You will come down to the E part. It won't take much time. So within three minutes, you're gonna be doing all these things. After the E, then you're gonna be asking about the patient, like when did it, you can, even going through SIM and all these assessments, you can ask the history, like when did it start? How did it start? Did it happen before? And after that, specifically, you need to ask any medical conditions you have, any allergies you have, any food allergies, any medication allergies. You need to ask these questions from the patient all the way down the road when you are doing these steps. Keep on reassuring, this will, in, this will improve your I, IPS along the way. So after doing like after doing this A, A to E assessment along with the history part, when it comes to the management, you are already have done with the management. So the core management part, like suppose the examiner is asking or you have two minutes left in the end and how you gonna do that. So the management part will involve like therapeutic aspect of the management part, diagnostic aspect of the management part, monitoring is the third part and the placement. What I mean by the therapeutic aspect is that like what you can do and what you can get someone to do, therapeutic aspect. Like you did your part and you gonna be involving relevant specialties if it is it is important like suppose the blood pressure of the patient is not increasing or the 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 situation is not improving so itu team is very important and uh, um, apart from that if blood pressure inotropic treatment is supposed to be given to the patient cardiology team is very important so you're going to be this is the therapeutic part of the management the, the second part is diagnostic aspect. 
So in the diagnostic aspect, you will be chasing the results you have already ordered, like chest X-ray, ABGs, and all, all these things. When you are addressing the patient, uh, sorry, examiner, if examiner is asking you a couple of questions regarding the management or reduction of differentials and all that. Third is not only you have to uh, save the patient, you have to keep the patient safe. Like you, it's not that, okay, you did your part, you're going to be leaving. No. Placement of the patient is important. Involving the seniors is involved, important. If the patient needs to be transferred to high observation unit, you're going to be mentioning that my patient needs to be transferred to high dependency unit. You're going to be telling that I'm going to be leaving my bleep number. So if in case anyone comes who want to ask about how the patient has been managed so far, I'll be, I'll be uh, on call. And apart from that, uh, is as this, this is an anaphylaxis reaction, so insulin report will be very, very important. So you're going to be mentioning either it's because of the blood, either it's because of any, in, uh, any antibiotics the patient has, has received because of which he went into anaphylaxis. So instant report till the end, you have to talk about, and then you have to talk about the instant report as well. So that's it. So any questions anyone have? I have a question. Okay. Hello. Um, yeah. In in the beginning, you said um, once we will see that uh, a patient is um, in anaphylaxis when we know that the blood is attached. Do we mention there and then that the patient is having anaphylaxis, or we just start managing the patient? Do we need to verbalize that that the patient is having anaphylaxis? Yeah, as I told you, that the patients, uh, like the moment you check into the mouth and the swelling is there, the facial edema, uh, angioedema is there, and the blood is attached to the patient, and the patient is saying, on the other hand, that uh, I am having trouble breathing, definitely you're going to be announcing it as anaphylaxis reaction. You're going to be stopping the blood. And there would be, there might be a clue down the road that, how did it happen, doctor? The moment I, I have been given the blood, it started happening. So at there and then, you're going to be seeing it as an anaphylaxis and you're going to be stopping the blood and you're going to be asking for the vitals along the way uh, injection adrenaline will come into place. Okay, thank you. Hello. Yes. Thank you for your presentation. I just I, wanted I, I, to ask... I, I'm really sorry, guys. I couldn't be able to make any presentation. Whatever was with me, I just try to just try to explain that. Uh, because I am working here in Abu Dhabi, so it was kind of like hard for me to make a presentation. But I'll try my level best to do it as as soon as possible. That's fine. Thank you. Um, you said when the patient, after giving oxygen, when you want to give um, salbutamol, you change the mask. In the mask for salbutamol, the venturi mask, are you also going to still attach oxygen to it or you just give only salbutamol and not, no, and not no. give oxygen again? You will give oxygen along with salbutamol, both. Okay. So you detach the oxygen um, tube from the non rebreathable mask and attach it to the venturi mask. Exactly, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Masroor, one a question. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, in, in this station, when you examine the airway, right there mm -hmm. and then, uh, you will get all the signs, you know, the inflamed um, uh, mouth, lips, and everything, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. So at, at the first step, and then the second step confirms it, everything. 
so wouldn't you wouldn't you immediately start with the uh, after solbutamol wouldn't you start with epinephrine uh, and not waste time in chlorpheniramine uh, and hydrocortisone yeah you are at sea uh, as i told you that wherever uh, like when you are assessing the patient and you find you notice some findings whether it's in the a part whether it's in the b part whether it's in the c part the moment you get to know that the specific finding is correlated with the specific diagnosis and you are confirmed about it, you can give adrenaline right there and there, right then and there. Because that is like, it's, uh, it's a matter of sex. What I, what I was trying to do, that only a skin reaction will not, signify that the patient is having anaphylaxis until unless there are a couple of <clears throat> islands you need to cover like suppose the blood is attached or it has been started just yeah, after giving excuse a, me. yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's what i'm saying if, if you enter the cubicle uh -huh. the man is there uh, uh -huh. blood is attached and you already read the history outside the cubicle right that is second blood and this is a call and the patient is allergic you check his rest wrist van on your uh, examination from the airway, you will come to know that this is anaphylaxis. And number two, when you go to B, that further confirms it. So I think yeah. then you jump start with the management. And the yeah, you are right. Yeah. Is, is it so right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. The, the, you right. Normally what happens, normally in some, like if you are fortunate enough, then there definitely will be uh, like blood attached to it. And you will get to know again, it's, it's anaphylaxis. And do, never assume that there would be 